Welcome children. In this video, we will discuss light and the various phenomena related to it. In this video, we will be discussing in particular refraction of light at plane surface. But to understand refraction, we need to understand reflection first of all. So let's recapitulate whatsoever we have done in our previous classes. Reflection of light is a phenomenon when a ray of light strikes a surface and bounces back in the same medium. We have done the laws of reflection. So, the very first law of reflection is that angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. And the second law states that the incident ray, the normal at the point of incidence, and the reflected ray all lie in the same plane. So children, we have done that light always travels in a straight line. And this property is termed as rectilinear propagation of light. But the new phenomenon that we are going to talk is refraction. And according to that, the light is going to bend. So, isn't it a contrary statement that we have done? That is rectilinear propagation of light. So, let's explore the new concept. Refraction of light. The change in the direction of path of light when it passes from one transparent medium to another transparent medium. The refraction of light is essentially a surface phenomenon. As we discussed in the previous slide, that light has the characteristic of traveling in a straight line. But refraction introduces that light bends. So, where is the loophole? The thing is, when we talk about reflection, the light bounces back in the same medium. Whereas, in refraction, the light is travelling from one transparent medium to another transparent medium. Partial reflection and partial refraction at the boundary of two media. When light travelling in one medium falls on the surface, a small part of it is reflected back in the same medium obeying the laws of reflection. And the rest of it is refracted through the other medium. That is, there is a partial reflection and partial refraction at the boundary surface. The intensity of the refracted light will obviously be less than that of the incident light because a part of the incident light has suffered reflection. Now, the question arises, what is the cause of refraction? Why there is bending of light when it enters from one transparent medium to another transparent medium? And is it the behavior of light is going to be same when it enters from a rarer to a denser medium or a denser to a rarer medium? So, let's check out. The ray of light when it enters from one medium to another because of the change in the density of the two media a ray of light passes and its direction or path changes because of the change in the speed of light in going from one medium to another it's simply because the density of the two media changes that's why speed of light changes and because speed of light changes that's why bending of light is there and the phenomenon of bending is termed as refraction. So I hope you have understood what is the cause of refraction but if a normal incident ray is there and it is passing from one medium to another medium that is angle of incidence is zero. At that point, the speed of light changes, but 
the direction of light does not change. That is, in that case, angle of refraction will also be zero and the ray passes undeviated and it will travel in the same straight line. Now let's talk about the behavior of light in different mediums. It has been experimentally observed that when a ray of light travels from a rarer medium to a denser medium, it bends towards the normal. If you see the figure here, the rarer medium has been taken as air and the denser medium as glass. A ray of light is entering from the medium air. But if you check out, instead of moving straight, it is bending a bit towards normal. And this is the refractive ray. And why this bending is there? Because of the change in the density of the two media. Here we are discussing when a ray of light is entering from a denser medium to a rarer medium. That is from glass to air. So when the ray moves from a denser to a rarer medium, it bends away from normal. Away from normal. That is, angle of incidence will not be equal to angle of refraction. It's going to be slightly more than that of angle of incidence. And what happens when the ray of light is normal to the surface of the two media? That is, perpendicular to the surface, separating the two media. Or I can say the angle of incidence is zero. We need to take care about the two statements. I am saying angle of incidence is zero. Also, it is a perpendicular line or it is a normal. So, we need to understand the difference between the two statements. So, if you check out when a ray is normal to the surface, or angle of incidence is zero, the incident light on the surface separating the two media passes undeviated. Now let's discuss the two laws of refraction. So children, if you remember, we had two laws of reflection, same way we have two laws of refraction. The first law of refraction is the incident ray, the refracted ray, and the normal at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane. So don't you think so this is the second law of reflection with only change that instead of refracted ray it was reflection in laws of reflection. Now let's see the second law of refraction. The ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is constant for a pair of given media. That is, mathematically we can write down sin i upon sin r is equal to constant and that constant is known as refractive index and we have written, if you see here, 1 mu 2. What does it represent? It tells you refractive index of second medium with respect to the first medium. The constant 1 mu 2 is called the refractive index. Now let's be more familiar with the terminology refractive index. In a layman's language, I can say that it is a measure of how much light slows down when it goes into a new medium. So I can define refractive index as Refractive index of second medium with respect to the first medium is defined as the ratio of the sine of angle of incidence in the first medium to the sine of angle of refraction in the second medium. Refractive index is generally denoted by small n or mu. It does not have any unit as it is a pure ratio. If you check out in the formula, the refractive index will be given by the ratio of speed of light in vacuum to speed of light in medium. Means 
The refractive index of a medium is generally defined with respect to vacuum and that is why it will be termed as absolute refractive index. But if instead of speed of light in vacuum, we take refractive index as simply the ratio of speed of light in one medium to speed of light in second medium, then it will be termed as refractive index of second medium with respect to the first medium. The refractive index of a transparent medium is always greater than 1 because speed of light in any medium is always less than that in vacuum. That is, speed of light in air or vacuum is always greater than speed of light in any other medium. The refractive index of diamond is 2.41. It means that light travels in air 2.41 times faster than in diamond or speed of light in diamond is 1 upon 2.41 times the speed of light in air. For two different media, refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium will be given by speed of light in medium 1 ratio speed of light in medium 2. If V1 is the speed of light in medium 1 and V2 is the speed of light in medium 2, then mu2 1 will be equal to V1 upon V2. Since refractive index and speed of light are inversely proportional to each other, hence refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium will be given by ratio of refractive index of second medium to refractive index of first medium. If the refractive indices of medium 1 and medium 2 are same, the speed of light will be same in both the media. So, a ray of light will pass from medium 1 to medium 2 without any change in its path, even when the angle of incidence in medium 1 is not 0. Now let's work on the factors affecting the refractive index of the medium. So we have three factors. First one is the nature of the medium. Less the speed of light in the medium as compared to that in air, more is the refractive index of the medium or I can say more is the density of the medium, more is the refractive index. That is the two are directly proportional to each other. The second condition is temperature. With increase in temperature, the speed of light in medium increases. So the refractive index of the medium decreases. That is temperature and refractive index are inversely proportional to each other. The third and the last factor is color or wavelength of light. The speed of light of all colors is same in air, but in any other transparent medium, the speed of light is different for different colors. In a given medium, the speed of red light is maximum and that of violet light is least. Therefore, the refractive index of that medium is maximum for violet light and least for red light. Thus, the wavelength of visible light increases from the violet to the red end. So, we can say the refractive index of a medium decreases with the increase in wavelength. That is, wavelength and refractive index are inversely proportional to each other. Now let's work on the conditions for a light ray to pass undeviated on refraction. A ray of light passes undeviated from medium 1 to medium 2 in either of the following two conditions. First, when the angle of incidence at the boundary of two media is 0. That is, angle of incidence is equal to angle of refraction and both are 0 degree. 
and the second condition is when the refractive index of the second medium is same as that of the first medium. So, in that case angle of incidence will be equal to angle of refraction. Now, let us try to find out what is the effect on speed, wavelength and frequency due to refraction of light. So, first of all let us see what is the effect on speed. When a ray of light gets refracted from a rarer to a denser medium, the speed of light decreases. While if it is refracted from a denser to a rarer medium, the speed of light increases. The second is the wavelength. The speed of light in a medium and the wavelength of light in that medium and the frequency of light are related as velocity or speed is equal to product of frequency and wavelength that is frequency will be given by ratio of speed to wavelength. So, when light passes from a rarer to a denser medium the wavelength decreases since speed of light decreases but its frequency remains unchanged. So, when light passes from a denser medium to a rarer medium the speed of light increases and hence its wavelength increases. And the last is frequency. The frequency of light depends on the source of light. So, it does not change on refraction. So, whether we talk about light or about sound, frequency does not change because frequency depends upon the source. There will be change in frequency only and only if the source is going to change, but the medium is not going to make any effect. So, in the previous slide we discussed that how speed and wavelength changes and frequency remains constant because there is no change in the source. So, if the light is going to travel from one medium to another, the change to wavelength here it is being depicted by lambda dash will be given by ratio of the original wavelength to the refractive index of the medium. So, it can be concluded that when a light moves from a rarer to a denser medium, the original wavelength will be more than the changed wavelength and vice versa. Thank you children and in the upcoming videos we will be talking about few amazing phenomena of light and we will try to explore more about light. Till then, goodbye and take care. God bless you all.